Can everybody say bon dia? Brazil Day was conceived of three years ago by me and uh, my fellow social studies teachers here. And we were basically looking for a way to bring the culture and music and food of Brazil to our students. In a seventh grade geography curriculum that we have, we basically break the world down into different regions and we fight off one of those at a time and with Latin America being one of our major regions of study we pick a case study and the case study here was Brazil but there won't be different roads leading in so that way they won't have to cut down the trees for like 20 different roads um, all right so in class we were talking about how in the Amazon a lot of different things are threatening the um, species there and the area there. This, because it's on the top and it's also on the bottom. This is called the plastron. This is the belly part of the shell. When he showed all the different Amazon animals and then talked about how they were all going in danger just because of the different problems with the deforestation and the global warming. They do not hunt and kill people. It kind of made it seem real to you how the Amazon is really being threatened. Would I recommend going up to one in the wild? No. They're very aggressive snakes and how seeing those animals, you know, in a few years, they might not be there now, and their populations are slowly growing smaller. So, you know, they're really being threatened. When she walks, she's like the samba that swings so cool and swells so gently that when she dances each one, she dances both. I think many times in social studies, we get criticized for not um, bringing the curriculum to life. And I think it's a perfect opportunity to do just that, bring it to life and um, give kids a hands-on uh, experience where they could see uh, Brazil at home in Cheltenham, but it's right in front of you because you have real Brazilians uh, presenting the, uh, the, their, own, their own culture. We're not telling the story. Brazilians in the Philadelphia area are telling the story. Brazil was a natural choice for us because we realized that there was a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on locally with Brazilian culture here in Philadelphia. Any time that you can get kids out of the classroom, where it's the classic, go in, read the book, talk about it. Any time you can get it hands-on, get them interactive, is a great time. The dancers, they were doing the dance, I don't know, and I don't know what it's called, samba dancing. They were doing the samba dance. <sighs> they, were, they were doing the samba dance, but they were revealing. I think this was the first year we had the dancers. Was this the first year we had the dancers in full regalia? Though they did a very good job of being age appropriate for our children. Um, though they were very exciting to watch and the colors were great.
put your hands up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. The great thing about bringing a performance group like uh, Minas or the Capoeira troupe to a seventh grade a setting like this is it's not difficult at all to get the kids up and up and moving around. The value is that it makes the information come alive. You don't learn everything in four walls. You can't learn everything from a book. You have to see it and feel it and taste it and touch it. I really like the capoeiro. That was pretty yeah, cool. It was, yeah. It was fun. And Really fun, yeah, yeah, and we learned about their cultures and we got to experience and like, we saw that animal. They're like, yeah. <laughs> are very good for, say, cracking open nuts, eating fruit, gnawing on things. Their teeth actually never stop growing. Um, seventh graders are very enthusiastic, a lot of them, to get up and dance in front of their friends. So when we ask for volunteers uh, every year for kids to come up on stage and participate, whether it's playing the musical instruments that Minas brings and learning the different uh, sounds that, that the instruments make and uh, the different dance moves, the samba dance, the kids are enthusiastic and you usually have to end up telling kids to sit down and because uh, you have more volunteers than you can handle up on stage. For seventh graders to be able to sit still for almost three hours the kids were very well behaved and they really enjoyed every piece of it and when there was time for real interaction they all wanted to participate which was fun too so maybe in future years we need to think about some ways that maybe they could more students could participate <laughs> change the call and see what happens. And they also learn how to be an audience, which is a really important skill. When is it appropriate to talk? When is it important to be quiet? How do I get quiet? Um, what do I want to focus on? They don't see as many live performances as they have in the past, and I think the live performances are very, very 
helpful in putting them in touch with the feelings of people. It's one thing to watch a video, talk about reading an article from a textbook, but when you can actually see the capoeira dancers, see the carnival costumes, taste the food, it brings a whole new element to the process. When I, when I finish Brazil Day, you hear kids side conversations, I want to go to Brazil. And I think as a seventh grade geography teacher, if you can just get kids interested and excited about the world beyond Cheltenham, I think we're doing our job. And that's what the Brazil Festival does. Oh,